Okay, so, as so, I was thinking about this a few months back or whatnot. Fan fiction is an interesting thing. Like, I think it's better than some people give it credit for, but I also think, I, I, this video was originally going to be just me talking about how fan fiction can be good and such, but then I realized that would be disingenuous and not right, so I started becoming, well, what is good and bad about fan fiction, but then I started leaning too much in the bad because I was confusing things that are more of a statement of fact about it with it, and I kept flip-flopping, so I decided to do this. It's gonna be fan fiction. The good, the bad, and the ugly. To clarify, I'm gonna have to do some clarification before I start this video. I'm gonna start, well, in the order you expect, good, bad, ugly. But, I need to define fan fiction first. Now, there are probably a few different definitions going around, but for the sake of this video, I'm gonna go with this definition. It's very simple. A fan fiction is anything that someone makes, story, written work, movie, comic, video game, web design, any, any, or any fan made product made by some of people who like or at least enjoy the original to some extent, but do not own the legal right to do it, to, to make something officially. So, for instance, just as an example, my Quincy Morris game would not count as a fan fiction, or fan fiction, because at because Dracula, when I wrote, when I made the game, was in the public is well still is in the public domain, which means as far as the game is concerned, I own the rights to it just as everyone else. So it isn't fan fiction because of that. And no, this isn't me trying to say it's fan fiction because I'm some kind of person who hates fan fiction. I'm just st laying out my definition. However, my most of my a lot of my other con my Hawkeye comic, well the Hawkeye vs Werewolf series would be fan fiction because I do not own the rights to Hawkeye or Ash Williams or Lehman Russ or anyone like or Data or anyone. I don't own the legal rights to any of those characters or their worlds. I'm simply making a fun story with them. So I so that would be fan fiction. Just so just to clarify now, you can argue, well it still kind of is fan fiction. No. The definition of fan fiction is any work made by a person about something who doesn't own the legal rights to do it. This isn't counting stuff like parodies with something, or something who's making something that looks or acts like it. For instance, if I make, um, Ultraman as a parody of Superman that isn't a fan fiction, that's a parody, or something made to act like it. Fan fictions are exclusive when talking about the official work, but not but by someone who doesn't own the rights to it. I'm not talking about making a, something on it with someone who doesn't own the rights to the product. I hope that helped explain. Now, second addendum before I start this list. When I mean good, I'm talking about stuff that is good about fan fiction or can be good about fan fiction. Bad is a simple thing. Thing that is either bad about fan fiction or things that can be bad about fan fiction. The ugly is kind of a neutral, baddish position. It's generally, you think of it close to neutral, more like, like how ugly is. It doesn't make someone Bad is, but it's not good either. It's more of a statement of fact, really. That's kind of what I'm trying to go with here. I just wanted to make this video here, so let's get started with the good because that seems like a good place to start. <laughs> Simply, point one, it's just a fun thing to do. If you really like a characters or a world or a setting or anything like that, doing stuff with it is just fun. It's just like having your own little piece of it. If you, for instance, really enjoy Iron Man, you really, really enjoy Iron Man. You know what I mean? You just, you just think he's the best superhero ever, and you wish there was more stuff about him. Well, then if you write your own story about Iron Man, official or not, you're probably going to enjoy doing it because you enjoy the character, or you want to, you want to do stuff like that. It's, it's just an interesting. It's just simple. It's that it can be a fun endeavor. And it's just create some fun stories, things to do with friends, or even story some things. Point two, it can help writers become better. It's really, it can be quite hard to start off with building your own world and story and setting and whatnot, just for the sake of trying to get better at writing. But starting with pre-made characters can help because you are already passionate about what it is, so you already want to make sure you do well with it. It can help you when making the product, and it helps you get past some early writer problems, generally involving grammar, pacing, and other such shenanigans. It can also help because you can release them to the world, because 
you can get criticism for it that isn't about the thing who wants to put it. Like, for instance, if you're writing a story about Batman, and you and you don't explain the character, well, don't explain, but you don't get the character very well, or you don't do something right in the writing process, like grammar issues, punctuation, or, or really just storytelling techniques in general, people can criticize you for that, and you can learn from it, without people getting confused with that, how the writing style or the character works, because everyone knows how Batman or something like that is supposed to work, or how the world's supposed to work, so you can always use that as a baseline to help get criticism and to do it. Number point three, it can just give you more of what you like. If you really enjoy, say, I don't know, anything really, if you just really enjoy something, and you wish you had more of it, this can be more of it. Now, granted, it's likely not to be on the same quality level as the original. At least, not likely unless it's really low quality. Then you just like it for other reasons. But, um, it can give you more of what you want. If you run, just want to see more of your favorite character, then, or a particular version of your favorite character or something like that, then that's a good way to do it, as it is more of that character. It's just how it rolls. But... That, that's a pretty simple point, it's just like, more of what you like, I mean, you can't argue with more of what you like. But, okay, what was point four, yeah. It can allow for things to happen that logically shouldn't happen. For instance, main, the main one being crossovers. Because crossovers in the normal official works are really hard to pull off due to licensing and other things like that. But, but they're often really exciting, because they're crossovers. And before people say crossovers are a new thing, Literally, people have been doing from about as long as we've had stories to cross them over with. We were crossing things over. Because we just like, because like, hey, I have this one thing I like, and I have this thing I also like. What if I put them together? It's not complex, nor is it hard to understand. It's a pretty simple thing, and it can create some really fun character interactions of characters who normally would never get the chance to meet, or do anything, or world or settings, allowing for character interactions that could simply never happen, because they physically can't do the licensing things, which can now happen in the world of fanfiction. Po point five, and probably the simplest, they can just be good stories. Just because something's a fanfiction does not necessarily mean it's going to be a low quality or bad. It could be a very good story that totally stands up in its own right, or could just be good. It could legitimately just be good. There's nothing just because something's a fan-made work doesn't mean it's bad, and it could be incredibly enjoyable, especially if you're coming to the fan fiction to get what it's offering. It's a pretty simple dynamic, but it does truly hold up. Those are the five major good points I point to fan fiction. Now the bad. Point one is simply put, they often aren't always the best. A lot. The natural nature of fan-made works is that there's no guarantee of quality. Anyone can just go to a typewriter or a Word document press or anything that allows you to type and start typing things. Anyone can start. Anyone can make a can put, can get an audio recording device and start making a YouTube video about something they like. Anyone can do a lot of these things. You know, a lot of these things are simple to do. That's kind of a, that's a good point in its own right. There's a low bar to entry, but it also means there's a low bar to entry. And what that means is that you'll get a lot of things, but they won't always be the best. And some of them can be pretty bad, as they can often be plagued with early writer problems, which can be especially egregious when you when you already know what you're dealing with. For instance, if you, if you come to a story to read about the Hulk, you know, a fan-made work, to hear more about the Hulk or something about the Hulk, and they just don't get the character, or have some flaw with the writing, or something like that, that's gonna be really hard to, to, to read, or watch, or whatever, because you know what it's supposed to be like, and it doesn't act like it's supposed to be like. So it can make any writer flaws exponentially worse. Of course, part of the things that those do tend to get ironed out if people become actual storytellers of any significant degree, but that's just how it is. Point two of the bad category, is that sometimes bad writing habits do start to bleed over into actual official works, whether 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 that would be something that the fanfiction was written about, or things, or just original projects. They some bad writing tips and tricks can bleed that that became popular, more common, or even created 
in fan fiction can sometimes bleed over into official works. The principal Class A one everyone knows about is the Mary Sue. That thing, though not entirely non-existent before fan fiction, really spread out in fan fiction because it was the perfect breeding ground for it, and now it has become bad enough that it has started to bled into actual official works, some of them where the fan fiction was originally written on. So it has created some bad rifle. Now, everyone and their mother knows about Mary Sue's, and I don't think anyone likes them. Anyone, really, except maybe the people who write them. But even then, I'm not sure. This isn't the thing about Mary Sue's, it's just something that should be pointed out. It Now, other some bad writing tips that have spread over, mainly characters acting in ways that don't make sense, whether they just break alignment, more or less, to my D&D fans out there. Seemingly just because the writers say so, because oftentimes a lot of fanfics are built on the premise of what if this happened, which oftentimes naturally require the characters to break alignment or the world to break sense for it to happen, which can be over in stories when they shouldn't exist. But that will be, I'll talk more about that later. Now, those are what I call the two bad points of fan fiction. The rest, especially the ones you're thinking of, belong in the ugly category, so let's get to that point. Uh, uh, fan fiction, the ugly. So, the first one, point one, the one you all probably thought was coming from the start, shipping. Oh my, shipping, shipping, shipping. There was, now, people ship things a lot. I don't particularly, as I'm generally pretty willing to go with whatever the story tells me is going to be the relationship. Unless I feel it makes absolutely no sense, but that's, you generally have to really do something to make it seem one way, and then do another for me to find it weird. Once again, I'm generally pretty willing to accept one character likes character B, and I'll just generally go with that, unless I'm given reason to suspect otherwise. But that really isn't a thing. But shipping, a lot of people like doing it, because it's just something fun to do. It kind of bleeds into point one, but the reason I put in the ugly category as it can create some weird moments where you have people who like one ship versus another ship, and they can start fighting over that, and though this isn't really unique to fan fiction, it's just something that does happen. Shipping isn't unique to fan fiction, but it is pretty much its home base. Also, they sometimes can get really weird, because, simply put, no one's oversighting any of it. It, once again, comes with everything being super independent. It can low bar to entry, so you can get some really weird stuff that can happen very easily. And that can be especially bad if it's happening to characters you personally like, and weird stuff happens. It can also lead to some weird moments where the fanfic will start bleeding in, or the shipping, fan shipping will start bleeding into reality. I'm looking at you, all the people who ship Cats America and Bucky. That thing was starting to bleed into the main Marvel universe. Or more specifically, the movies. I don't mean to call people out here, I'm just saying, that kind of thing is the whole reason that exists. Like, some of the weird scenes exist. Just, just saying. It's response to the fans, and it's kind of weird. Especially when you consider the characters don't make any sense. But th I'm not here to talk about that. I'm not here to talk about that. I'm just here staying an example, so I, you know what I'm talking about. It's not really a bad thing either, because... If you really do think two characters work well together and you wish you saw more of it, then, once again, this is the place where you'll find it. Also, no point in shipping is that it can allow characters who would never meet, once again, due to the licensing crossover connection here, which can be both good and bad, as you can have things where you're like, wow, I never thought those two would ever make sense, but now they can never get together due to one reason or another, generally licensing. But, you know, when they do, it's not so bad. And then you can have moments like these two characters would hate each other. Why are you doing that? You know what I mean? You get those kind of things can happen. But yeah, that's the point on shipping there. Um, a point two. Some not very nice things. This is fairly simple, not terribly common, but simply put, since no one's oversighting this, you can writers can do what ever they want with the characters because no one can stop them from doing it and that can get to some pretty messed up territory i don't think i have to explain how that could end badly because anyone can do anything and low bar to entry equals messed up stuff can occasionally happen not always but sometimes they have joe generally i imagine most the most famous people try to pretend not pretend but just don't engage in that it's just something that one has to think about. Point three, there's a lot of them. Because, once again, low bar to injury. 
this isn't really a bad or good thing. Like I said, well, this is why it's in the ugly category. I mean, I know point two kind of felt like it belonged in the bad category, but it just really felt like the point two of the ugly just seemed ugly, even though it probably should be in the bad category, but that's not point. There are a lot of them, there are individuals with fan fictions, and fan stories, and fan creations, which means if there is something you like or think could be a cool idea, there probably is it exists. It probably exists somewhere. Like, you know, who would think to, like, hey, what if Hawkeye and Ash Williams teamed up with Lehman West and Data to go beat up a bunch of space werewolves? Like, who would think of that? Well, if you did happen to think about it, well, surprise, surprise, someone's already done that. So you can find almost anything you want. The problem is, a lot of them aren't always going to be good. Because low bar to entry means low quality often. Because, once again, no quality control. It's simple. Also, it can be sometimes hard to find what you want. If there, if what your idea is fairly popular, it can lead to a lot of things where you just want to find that one thing. But it gets buried under other things that are just similar enough to appear in search engines. Or just the type of story you want. Generally, just pick something you wish happened in story A, or bring in something from from thing B to story A, and then try to decipher it. It You'll see why I mean if you ever want to try that out, just as an experiment. And point four, a lot of the writers are just noobs. So you're going to get a lot of rookie mistakes, some cringeworthy moments, and just other things like that. That can happen in any story, but since a lot of these people are new to writing in general, and fanfiction has low bar to low bar to entry and quality control, this happens a fair bit, where you'll get things that just, just aren't terribly good sometimes. Just a lot of new people who don't know what they're doing. It's just the nature of the world. So, that's my video of fame fiction, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Um, I hope you enjoyed this little thing. Um, I want this. I hope this video came out more positive because I do think fan fictions are better than people give them credit for, and a lot of the problems with fan fiction are actually writing techniques that are not exclusive to fan fiction, which I pointed out in Bad Point Two. They aren't unique to fan fictions; they're just found more commonly there. It's just kind of an interesting thing. But overall, fan fictions can be good, and I want people to remember that. That's why I have five good points. It, which is the largest of either of any of the three categories, because it is predominantly a good thing in my opinion. So, you know, if you ever happen to think, hmm, I wonder what happened if this happened, or just want to see more of something you like, don't feel free to go search on the internet to see if someone had the same idea and see what they wrote, because it could truly, because you could truly find some interesting tales that couldn't be told anywhere else. Anyway, hope you enjoyed my little video. Um, if you want to see. If you want to see Adventures of Hawkeye in Space, the, the one, if, you, if you ever see one and see Hawkeye in Space, I've happily have an entire series that I'm still working on with more with fun characters and antics to come. So if you happen to be interested in my weird little fan fiction of Hawkeye versus werewolves in space, well, just stick around to the rest of my channel. Um, see you then.